we knew it was going to happen, summer is coming to an end. And pretty soon it's going to be time to go back to school, like it or not. So, I am doing my prep work, getting ready for the school year. And in doing so, I'm going to be uh, reading the story together uh, about Beethoven. Um, and I wanted to just let you know where we are. Uh, and while we're here. Um, prep work for teachers is just similar to homework for students. You know, there's always work that we need to do beforehand before we go into the classroom. And it's not any different, different for teachers as it is for students. So finding where you do your prep work or your homework is, uh, you know, a good strategy to make it make it a little bit more fun, okay? You don't have to be in some boring place. You can be in an exciting place, a place that just kind of works into your routine. We happen to be at the dog park up in Hidden Valley. And if we're lucky, our family dog, Duke, might grace us with his presence. How lovely that would be. He's just right over there doing his thing and playing around with some other dogs. But um, anyway, uh, you don't have to be in some boring place that you don't like while you're doing your homework or your prep work, okay? So uh, we're just going to enjoy diving right on in to Beethoven here at the dog park. I'm going to switch out my shades for my reading glasses. Um, this... Uh, book about Beethoven is a little meaty okay so we're gonna take it in spurts okay we may finish uh, finish it all in one sitting but it's probably most likely that we're gonna do a little bit of it at a time and build on it in different classes okay so let's just get started uh, Ludwig van Beethoven and we'll be talking a lot about Beethoven's music and our music classes throughout the year. Um, named for his grandfather, Ludwig van Beethoven would far surpass the passions and talent of the elder man. His grandfather, coming from a long line of farmers, was the first Beethoven to earn his living as a musician, singer, and court composer in the noble city of Bonn, Germany. Standing beneath his grandfather's portrait, the child remembered his lovely, deep voice and being bounced on his knee to the rhythm of the song. He was most comfortable when he was surrounded by music. The younger Beethoven would go to the piano climb into the stool, and tentatively press a few, few keys while peering at the doorway. His father didn't like it when Ludwig played the notes that he heard on his, in his head instead of the notes in his music book. And if he didn't practice the music in his book enough, he'd get his ears boxed. Beethoven listened. It was quiet in the apartment, except for the sound of a baby crying. Out in the yard, he could hear the Fisher's children playing. Their parents owned the house and next to them in Bonn. Unable to hear enough as a singer, Beethoven's father was forced to give music lessons to the rich. His grandfather, too, despite reaching the level of court composer, he had to earn money on the side as a wine seller and had died when little Beethoven was just three years old. His grandmother was still alive, but no one spoke of her much. Too much wine had made her sick, and she was taken care of by the nuns. That was why Beethoven's mother always worried about his father and his fondness for wine. Despite this, she would still buy wine for him, especially on days when he brought money home. Beethoven never saw his mother yell, but he never saw her happy either. Beethoven took up his violin and played a melody that he played, that he made up for his grandfather's portrait. 
The grandfather had always loved the violin. Suddenly, the door burst open. What kind of horrible screeching is that? cried his father. Just play the notes in your book. Beethoven looked at his father and then at the portrait of his grandfather. Tentatively, he played his melody once more. Don't you think it sounds really nice? That's not real music, shouted his father. Play the notes in your book. He raised his hand. Right, we just talked about uh, the role of wine in Beethoven's household and how he played music from the music in his head and not the music that was on the book, on, on the pages of his music. All right, and turning the page. Beethoven's father was strict and rough with him, yet amongst his, amongst his music colleagues, he was also very cheerful. Sometimes, if he'd had too much to drink, he would stumble into the children's room in the middle of the night and tear Beethoven from his bed. You have to practice, he deliberately wanted Beethoven to be a child prodigy like Mozart had been. When Beethoven was eight years old, his father had him play the piano at a concert and lied about his age. The program said he was six. The father's musician friends worried about the little one. He was always so serious and so shy. His father's unrealistic expectations were sure to harm him. So. The talented friends started teaching Beethoven to play the violin, piano, and organ. Soon he could play the organ so well at age 10, he replaced his teacher at the early morning mass, unpaid of course. His classmates in school didn't notice anything special about him, except that he was often dirty and unkept. The new court organist, Christian Gottlob Neff was the teacher who would almost who would most influence Beethoven. Under him, Beethoven learned to play works of Bach and composed his own pieces. Best of all, he could talk to the teacher about anything. Neff believed that music was a special form of art that made people better and smarter. He taught the young Beethoven the importance of reading and learning. To encourage him, he had Beethoven's first big com compositions printed. He even wrote the following about his student in a magazine. He will certainly become a second Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart if he continues to make such progress. He should be supported and allowed to travel. But at the time, traveling was not an option. Beethoven had to help support his family. The new Archbishop and Elector Maximilian France employed the 14-year-old Beethoven as a court musician and paid him for his services as organist and harpsichordist during opera performances. Beethoven understood what was expected of him and knew he could no longer run around in tattered clothing. He wore a tail coat and short green pants, white silk stockings, a flowered silk vest embellished with golden embroidery, and carried a small sword under his left arm. Suddenly, for the first time, he was making friends, including Franz Wiggler, who would become a lifelong friend, working as a piano teacher for the von Rundwick family, Beethoven met the siblings Lon uh, Leonore and Stefan, their mother Helen von Buring, 
treated the young musician as her own child. Beethoven was happy in his circle of friends. When he was 17, he received a stipend to study in Vienna. His friends were happy for him. Perhaps he would meet Mozart. But, 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 but Beethoven was only able to stay in Vienna for three weeks. A letter from his father brought him back to Bonn in despair. His mother was on her deathbed. Broke, he had, no, he had to borrow money to get home. Despite his rush, he made a stop in Osberg to visit famous instrument maker Andres Stein and his, and his daughter Nanette. Nanette was thrilled when he tried out her father's pianos. While he played, his fears subsided, but only while he played. A few days after his return, his mother died and Ludwig van Beethoven was left to take care of his two younger brothers and his alcoholic father. He alone supported the family financially. Luckily, his friends stuck by him and he became well known as a pianist. Not only could he play any music provided, but he could create variations on it. Variations so new and powerful that they took the audience's breath away. Once he was playing the organ in a church that was being renovated, the audience in the organ loft was deeply moved. The workers below laid down their shovels one by one. They were astonished by what they heard. What music was this? They could never forget it as long as they lived. 